Greetings. Let me first uh, thank Raj for giving me this opportunity to be part of this uh, great course. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position to make it, so I recorded this talk with the hope that both the audience as well as others around the world will benefit from this talk. So let's talk about ideal colonoscopic techniques, 10, tip, 10 tips and tricks. These are my disclosures. And let's talk about ideal colonoscopy and ideal colonoscopist. An ideal colonoscopist is safe and effective in both detection as well as resection of polyps completely. But in reality, we do not find an ideal colonoscopist. Those who could detect may not be adequately trained to be effective in resection. And those who could resect may not have the patience to do a good screening exam. So let's talk about a few definitions. ADR or adenoma detection rate. It means the number of patients with an adenoma if you screen 100 average risk patients for the first time. As you can see here, ADR is 30%. That means 30 out of 100 were found to have an adenoma. When I meant that in reality, there is a wide variation in the detection rate. Let's look at this landmark paper published in New England Journal of Medicine about 15 years ago from a practice in Rockford, Illinois. What they have shown is that there is a nine-fold difference in adenoma detection rate among the endoscopists in that practice. And that is a huge difference. In another paper from Heiko Pohl, we learn that the resection rate, the completeness of resection, varies from endoscopist to endoscopist. It also varies depending upon the size of the lesion and the nature of the lesion as well. Why is adenoma detection rate important? Dr. Corley and others have shown that those who have low adenoma detection rate in their practice are likely to have a higher incidence of interval colorectal cancer and higher advanced cancers and fatal cancers. If you go to a practice where they have a very high adenoma detection rate, your chance of developing interval cancer, advanced cancer, and fatal cancer is likely to be low. For every 1% increase in adenoma detection rate, it is associated with a 5% decrease in fatal interval cancers. So with this background, let me share with you where do we stand at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. In a large study of screening colonoscopies performed between 2010 and 2013, our adenoma detection rate is 50% in men, 36% in women, and for serrated lesion detection rate, men around 10%, and in women, 7.1%. We not only do this, uh, we not only have a very high detection rate, we maintain our high detection rate. We have developed a natural language processing tool as an alternative to manual reporting to
to measure colonoscopy quality metrics. And our quality officer, Dr. William Ross, gives us these rates on a periodic basis. And we also go into great detail looking at adenoma detection rate, Sassel's adenoma detection rate, advanced adenomas, multiple adenomas, and we can also figure out based on the race, age, quality of the prep, sacral intubation, et cetera, et cetera. Let's talk about how did we get there. Our track record shows that we have a very high quality colonoscopy screening program at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. I would like you all to consider reading this beautiful book by Atul Gavande on Better, published in 2007. You learn a lot about how to improve the quality of care in your own practice. And another important reading is the works of uh, Edward Deming on quality improvement. It is all, it all boils down to processes. Processes that we set up, monitor, and periodically make changes to provide exceptional service. So let me tell you this story. Uh, this is Lee Clark Clinic, first president of MD Anderson Cancer Center, Dr. Lee Clark, laid the foundation for this great institution. And I joined uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in 2009. At that time, we were still doing overnight prep for, colon, for colonoscopy. We started changing the prep to a split dose, and then we came up with, a, with an educational tool. We created a YouTube channel a video and uh, educated our patients about the importance of splitting the dose to have an excellent prep. This has certainly improved the quality of the prep, which is critical to increase your adenoma detection rate. Here is an example of a patient who has had three failed uh, suboptimal preps, finally cleared and found to have an advanced lesion in the cecum. So prep is critical. The next is when you plan to do a procedure Colonoscopy, among all the endoscopy procedures, is labor-intensive. So you must pay attention to proper forum. So as you can see here, here is an endoscopist who is bending forwards with the patient lying in the center of the bed and trying to exert a lot of manual pressure to do the procedure. How can you improve the form? I feel that keeping the patient at the edge of the bed and the endoscopist stepping back will give you a lot of freedom to have a proper form so that you could stand erect and perform the procedure. It's also important to use your body movements to torque and that is possible when you have the patient at the edge of the bed and you stand a few feet away from the patient that gives you that ability to talk your body instead of the small joints of your hand to talk the scope. And that is something to keep in mind. As you can see here, what I mean is when you stand very close to the bed, you end up talking by tightening your grip, etc. But if you stand a little bit further, it automatically makes your colonoscopy a lot easier. It's also important to take time for, corona, for the withdrawal of the scope. Although six minutes has been shown, we typically tend to do 10 minutes or longer for our colonoscopy withdrawal. And as you can see, it also shows higher adenoma detection rate with a longer withdrawal time. Most of us in our practice use a cap-fitted colonoscope, and with this, we have shown that it increases the adenoma detection rate, as you can see here. 
as you go into the colon, it's important to clear the form and examine. And let me show you the benefits of doing this. Here is the beginning with a lot of bubbles. And as you wash, you reveal this large flat lesion. Another important point I want to make is you want to reach the cecum with a short straight scope. How do you know whether you reached with a short straight scope? With the gentle roll of your hand or the fingers, you should be able to move the scope, go from three o'clock, the ileocecal valve position at three o'clock to 12 o'clock to nine o'clock to six o'clock and then to three o'clock. And if you can do that, you have a better scope tip control that allows you to examine better and allows you to do resection of polyps better. So let's look at it and see. Is this a good cecal exam? It looks like so. But I want to show you that it is important to expose the folds so that polyps hiding under a fold may be revealed. Here you see a large flat sessile serrated adenoma hiding underneath that fold. This could have been missed if time was not taken to really expose the folds and have a good examination. Take time to suction and dry up the colon and never assume that there's nothing underneath that pool of fluid. As we suction, there is still some debris. We use a water jet to clear the debris. And then after suctioning it, drying it, and examining the cecum, we realize that there are a few large flat lesions. So here is one, as you wash here, it will come into, your, into the front of your eyes, a large flat sessile serrated adenoma. It's also important to examine behind the folds. Having a cap at the end of the scope will give you that opportunity to examine behind the folds. Here is the cecum. The cecal exam looks good. And as we try to withdraw on the right side, top, left, and then back, we decided that we have not had a good look behind that fold on the right side. So if we move forwards, use the cap, and then when we withdraw, we could expose that polyp. This could have been missed if you are not obsessive and compulsive in examining the entire circumference of the colon. What is the best withdrawal technique? You should keep in mind that if you withdraw with the focus on the center of the lumen, you're likely to miss flat lesions. Instead, you should focus on the wall instead of the lumen to really detect flat lesions. And it's also important to train the eye and look for interruption of the vessels and interruption of the innominate grooves to find subtle flat lesions. Here is one. There is interruption of the vascular architecture that is better seen after highlighting the vessels. And here we go, as you can identify that. And let me show you another video where the vessels stopped and we are not sure. This is one of my first cases when I came to MD Anderson. At that time, I was not using indigo carmine for my submucosal injection. We injected saline. And as you can see, this was an excellent colon prep. And after injection, you could see that subtle flat lesion. And this on EMR turned out to be a sessile serrated adenoma. So it's important to keep an eye on the wall to detect flat lesions. Here is another lesion where the vessel stopped, just a little bit of redness. And when we injected with, uh, with indigo carmine uh, submucosal injection, 
it shows that lesion much more clearly. Endoscopic mucosal resection of this lesion actually turned out to be a tubular adenoma with high-grade dysplasia. Let's look at another example. As you come out of the rectum, it's important to examine the low portion of the rectum, and here is a sessal serrated adenoma close to the rectum, uh, just above the dentate line, identified by injection of indigo carmine solution. So in order to help the trainees, I've set aside a YouTube channel and uh, identified the subtle lesions where I thought that I would have missed them easily. And I hope you find time to look at these videos to improve your detection rate. I would like to uh, bring best wishes from the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I want to thank you. I'm sorry that I could not be there in person. And I would like to leave you with this great quote from Peter Drucker, quality in service or product is not what you put into it, it is what the client or customer gets out of it. Thank you.